here's that other half where we had the corpus callosum and the septum pellucidum in front of the lateral ventricle. Down below, we have this really well-formed circle. It's a very circular bit of tissue, and that is the thalamus. Remember, there are two sides, a left and a right side, so if we cut straight down the center, we would say this is where the two thalami meet, so the interthalamic adhesion is uh, that part we talked about that's missing in 30% of males, the connection between the two sides of the thalamus, thalami. But it's a very good landmark when you're looking at a sheep brain that doesn't have um, a lot of differences in the tissue. It just looks like a big blob of tan tissue. So if you have the circle, that's the thalamus. Okay, the epithalamus is upon the thalamus, and it's going to go over the top of the thalamus, just a very thin line that's going to end here in this round structure, this other round structure that's the pineal gland or pineal gland that produces melatonin that helps regulate your circadian rhythms. Okay, so it's pretty large. You can see here in the sheep brain. Big round circle is the thalamus. The smaller round circle behind it is the pineal or pineal gland. Epithalamus connects it. The third ventricle is actually going to surround this thalamus. So the third ventricle has connections that we can't quite see uh, with this lateral ventricle on either side, but it's surrounding the whole thalamus, which is located in this middle region, the midbrain. So that's why it's also called the ventricle of the midbrain. And you can see a little bit of pigment down there. There's probably some choroid plexus that we can't quite get into. The aqueduct of the midbrain that connects the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle is actually going to come down around the thalamus. It's going to be this connection right here that you can follow down as we come down. It's going to go in between the rest of this brain stem and the cerebellum. So the aqueduct of the midbrain is this canal and it's going to empty into this fourth ventricle which is right here in this indent of the cerebellum. So it's right in the middle of the cerebellum that it indents and the emptying of that canal is a more wide open space. That's the fourth ventricle. The canal, as it comes up, you can see this is where those corpora quadrigemina are in the, this mid-sagittal view that you're looking at down the center cut. This is the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. Remember, that's the singular version of colliculi. And if this is the thalamus, this round circle is the thalamus, then below it is the hypothalamus. Right? So this region between the mammillary body, which I guess I haven't mentioned in this view yet, this round structure, is the mammillary body. And that, these are the cerebral peduncles, the foot paths that we've cut through coming from the pons. So it's right on the other side of the colliculi. These are the cerebral peduncles. Mammillary body, and then the hypothalamus. This is the optic chiasm that was cut through. So this little region, the hypothalamus, is responsible for all sorts of functions, and it does produce a couple of hormones and stimulates other hormones to be produced or um, distributed from the pituitary gland. This is where the infundibulum would be, and the pituitary gland would hang down from that. Okay, here is another uh, brain half. We're looking at the cerebellum now. This white matter, these little tree branches that you see coming out, white matter into the gray matter, those are the arbor vitae, viti, the tree of life. And that's the, the white matter within the gray matter. Um, all these folia are the, the ridges that are like gyri, but ridges I think are a little bit different for the cerebellum, so the folia. And then right here, right around that area where the um, fourth ventricle was located, this would be the flocculonodular lobe, if you remember that word. And that's going to uh, have a, an important function for pathways that we'll see maintaining equilibrium and balance, which we know the cerebellum is responsible for. So here we are with our mid-sagittal split of the sheep brain. And if we remember all those parts that we just went over and put it back together, 
you can see again just some big landmarks the optic chiasm here is going to be your landmark to tell you right behind it is the infundibulum and therefore if we open it up right in those locations is where you'll find the hypothalamus the big round thalamus above it so here's that optic chiasm cut again the mammillary body in between is the hypothalamus above it is the thalamus and remember that thalamus, for our purposes, we're just remembering that it is right in the middle of the brain. It's the relay center. So all the information, sensory information that's coming in from all these different nerves, locations, it's going to end up going through the thalamus until it's, there are different nuclei in here that are responsible for each different region. The information is going to go up eventually to the different cortices, different areas of these cortex um, parts of the lobes of the cerebrum. So it's important that everything goes through this thalamus except for one particular nerve and that's going to be this olfactory nerve with the olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, because it has a direct connection with the, the nerve and the cerebrum. So therefore it doesn't need to go through the thalamus. Well that is a pretty good overview of our sheep brain. We're going to go ahead and say goodbye this nice view. Goodbye from lefty. Goodbye from righty. We're on to the eyeball next.